Hi everyone, it's Kevin from Creality. I'm here with the K2 Plus. I've got a K1 right beside it here so you can kind of see the, the size difference. Uh, this is 220 by 220 build plate. You know, that's normal. That's our normal size build plate that we've got on all of our printers. <laughs> Not all of our printers because the K2 Plus 350 by 350, it's a giant. As you know, that's my favorite feature about the K2 Plus is the size. Of course, the other feature that I really like is the CFS, which allows us to print in multi-colors or multi-materials. So you could have preloaded four different uh, types of material. You could have PTG, you could have PLA, you can have ABS, you can have different filaments preloaded in your printer. So depending on the job you need to do, you can run it. Okay, I just learned this today. If I wanna take the filament out, I can just pull it out like that. And I kept one finger on here so that it doesn't spring back because I hate getting a twist in my filament. And then you can tuck it away as normal. Then you need to load it, you stick it in here and she takes over right there. You don't have to push anything. There is a little lever here, I guess for manual changes, but it's automatically doing that. It's powered by the printer, so it's got no external power to itself. It's just plugged into the back of the K2 Plus. So, four different colors or types of filament preloaded into the K2 Plus. K2 Plus is massive. That's the nice thing about it. It's really, really big. 350 by 350 by 350. When it does multicolor prints uh, like this one, let's see if I can pull one of these out. You can see what I mean by a multicolor print. So this printed flat like this. So each layer on the first layers had white and green. And then after it got finished the white and green, it printed gray on the top. So it used three different colors in one print. So it's able to do that while producing a little bit of what we call poop. We actually call this printer poop. Uh, when it changed from green, or from white to green, it would have pooped out this white. This is the last color that it pooped and that's wasted filament. So basically when it does a color change, the nozzle, which is about this long on the K2 Plus, is full of filament. And at the end of a cycle, when it wants to change colors, it cuts the filament and pulls it back automatically rolls back the filament into the CFS. But you've got this much filament inside the nozzle. So the next color comes in and pushes this color out into a poop. What we call uh, filament poop. It's a tiny little bit of waste that's melted and pushed out the back, okay? So then the next color comes in, that's how this one gets pushed out of the nozzle. The new color comes in and pushes that one out of the nozzle. So the color of the poop is actually the old filament that you're changing out of. The new filament ends up being pushed into the nozzle so that when you start printing, you're printing with the new color that you've just changed out. So if you're changing from orange to yellow, inside the nozzle, the yellow is going to push the orange out Orange is gonna disappear into poop. Yellow is now loaded into the nozzle and it starts printing in yellow. You don't have to do any of that yourself. The printer does it all for you. So I know that it sounds like, oh, this is complicated technology, but it loads itself. The bed auto levels itself. Everything is done for us in the printer. The slicer settings, slicer is just a fancy word for the software that we use to make prints. So we take a file, a picture of the product that we wanna make. We download a picture, a file, on our computer of something that we want to print. And then we put it in a slicer software. The slicer software divides it up into pieces, into slices, because each layer is a slice. And so that slicer software does all of our printing for us. This printer now, we can choose what color this print is, this is, this print is done on this old K1. So it's all in one color, but now we wanna give him black eyes, we can add the black filament in our slicer settings, okay? So we have to paint the model in the slicer software. That's all done before you put it into the printer. 
the printer reads the slicer settings on its screen. And once it's on the screen, you can check my other videos, you can change the color here to one of the many colors. If the filament has RFID, it will automatically recognize it. If not, you can select the color of filament that you're putting in there. So the printer is doing almost all of the work. We still need to download the file. Uh, some files come pre-painted. Some, somebody who created the software maybe already painted a file. You download it, it's already multicolor. you just put it in and, and hit print. Something else I really about, like about the K-series printers, that's the K1, K1C, K1 Max, and now the K2 Plus. All of them are basically ready to go out of the box. This one will come pre-assembled as you see it right here. The only thing you'll have to attach is the screen. You'll have to plug in a cable at the back of the screen and put it on. Take a bunch of foam out. It comes with the door already on it. Everything is pre-assembled. It is almost entirely ready to go out of the box. Now the CFS is separate. You'll have to connect its cables at the back. But this is a very beginner friendly device. Probably, I haven't unboxed one of these yet because nobody has them but I'm guessing within 10 minutes of opening the box, you'll be printing. You, uh, the configuration, the auto leveling, all of that stuff might take 11 or 12 minutes. It's gonna take you five minutes to open the box, get it set up, get it plugged in, and start the device. Then it's going to auto level and everything by itself for about 11 or 12 minutes. Same with the K1, the K1C and the K1 Max. Within 20 minutes, and 11 of that is you watching the printer while you're drinking a coffee or having a milkshake. This, this is not a difficult device to do. This is very beginner friendly. And so you will love the K-series printers for that. No assembly required. Here's a comparison of the size of the build plate for the K1 and K1C. It is puny. I'll put it at the back. It is puny in comparison to the K2 Plus. The K2 Plus, huge build plate. So that's the huge advantage now of the K2 Plus obviously is the size and then the multicolor printing. You will be able to use multicolor printing on your K1, K1C, K1 Max, Ender 3 V3 and Ender 3 V3 Plus for sure. Those are the ones I know for sure, okay? So that's the most common question I get asked all the time. Uh, another common question I get asked all the time is, is this a filament dryer because it's got uh, temperature and humidity setting a reading on it. No, it's not an active dryer. Well, let's go inside and you can see right here there is a spot for desiccant. Okay, you can put your silica gel in there. There's another one on the other side as well. So it's not an active dryer, but it is a dry environment. So it is a sealed box. Oh, I love this. Watch this, you guys. That's how easy it is to load two rolls of filament. We've got your filament choices here. Um, you can edit them here. You can choose the type of filament. You've got all your different types of filaments. So if you, you're going to have PETG in there, oh, hyper PETG or CR PETG. What color is it? Oh, I don't have RFID tag. So there you go. We're done. It's just that easy. Here's a little guide button that tells you what all of the icons are for. So RFID refresh button. Then we have the filament color and type indication is all set right here. So you can see on the screen, it tells you this is your green PLA, obviously. All of the information is here. And there's a white arrow that shows up when it's loaded into the hot end, which it's not printing right now, so it's not. We have CFS settings here, insertion detection, which will automatically read the filament when you put new filament inside. So it takes about 20 seconds, it will automatically look for the filament rather than having to hit that reset button. Startup detection, every time the system starts, it automatically reads filament information, which takes one minute. Those are both turned off here. They are more interested in just quickly changing the color here at the office. Automatic refill. After the filament is run out, it will automatically switch to a filament with the same type and color. That is turned on. Now, what that means is, if you're printing something very large, which you can, you want it all in black, you can have black, black, black. You can have all three of these set to black. Okay? And because they're both PLA, when this one runs out, 
It's got runout sensors in the CFS as well as on the hot end and it will automatically stop using this one and go to the other roll, which is the same filament color and type. So it knows what filament you have and will automatically change it for you. Amazing, that's a good one. Let's change that back. Okay, so that's what's there in the tool section. Uh, we've got extrude and retract. We don't need to worry about that. Movement and temperature is the same. This is the same UI as on the other K-series printers. The only difference would be the active chamber heater. You can see here the active chamber heater maximum temperature is 60 degrees. Here's the build plate temperature. Build plate temperature input range is up to 120 degrees. And the hot end temperature up to 350 degrees. This allows you to print in a lot of different filaments. Now, if you're a beginner, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, you won't need to use the active chamber heater uh, not when you're using PLA, certainly. Um, and the nozzle temperature for PLA is like 190 to 220, somewhere in there. So it, it doesn't really require 350. That's for more advanced filaments. So this is a consumer level device that will ad allow you to print in advanced filaments like ABS and all these other amazing filaments, okay? And yeah, I like moving the... Oh my gosh, you guys. I just just discovered something very cool. I knew how to move that before. That's not what I discovered. What I discovered was how quiet that is compared to my K1. Holy doodle. I'm gonna put my microphone. You can see the build plate? I'm gonna put my microphone. Oh, it's on the build plate. It's magnetically stuck to the build plate. And I'm gonna move the Z axis up 30 millimeters. I'm telling you, I cannot hear that myself. I can't hear it. Can you hear it? Well, I'll tell you what I just learned is that the Z axis for sure is dead quiet. Wow, is that much quieter. I, uh, when I get home, I'm going to uh, take, I'm going to edit in a, the exact same thing with this exact same microphone on my printer at home, K1 or K1C, and try that because it's not that quiet. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, I'm here at home, my K1C. Just going to test for sound and try the microphone and see if this works. All right, I think I answered all the questions that I've had about the K2 Plus. If you enjoyed the content, please give me a like. I sure appreciate it. And we'll see you guys on the next one.